Welcome, travelers, to another episode of Hitchhiker's Guide to Epic Nominati. I'm your host, Ike. Kink World knows me as Hito. Hell, some people know both. But yeah, sorry for the long hiatus. I know it's been like a good... Shit, how long? It's been about six weeks since I recorded that episode with the Love Goddess, which was a fun-ass episode. I need to go ahead and have more guests on. Um, but yeah, I've just been like working, traveling, you know, getting money up to pay for traveling, all craziness like that. And, um, yeah, we are here to go ahead and bring up episode nine, which I am titling Cheater, Cheater, Pum Pum Eater. I could have said pumpkin, but Pum Pum is so fun to say. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take a look into aspects of cheating, like what's it all like, because... Cheating is not as simple as some people try to make it say. Like, it's not just a simple matter of, like, sticking your dick or sliding on a dick into someone else. It's it's a lot more nuanced than that. Because there are many reasons why people cheat. Like, yes, there are some people that cheat because they can do it. But then there are other people that cheat just because maybe something is missing. Maybe something um, is not being said. Maybe it's their cry for help. So, there are many ways to, like, look at it. And... Within, like, with that, we can go ahead and get into this episode. And for our road trip music or book, this time around, we are going with Thriving in Non-Monogamy, an, an Ethical Sluts Guide, Overcoming Jealousy, Enjoy Sex, and Honor Yourself. This was written by an Aaron Davison. And um, uh, the reason why I know about this book is because there's a group I'm in called Experience Covet. And we have a book club, and this is the book that we are reading for that book club. Which I need to go ahead and get caught up because our next meetup is on Thursday. And I have yet to crack that book open. I wish they had an audio book, but apparently they don't. So, <sighs> I guess I'm going to be busy reading like a motherfucker the next couple of days. Um, but I would say go ahead and check it out. I feel like anyone that is interested in... The, any kind of non-monogamy, any kind of, like, relationships in general, it's good to go ahead and, like, find resources um, in order to just, you know, learn a little bit more within the world to see if it's the world for you. Um, and, hey, if you're interested in joining, like, Experience Covet, they have a website, experiencecovet.com. Boone is the founder the CEO, and she does an amazing job there. I went to the opera a few months ago, and it was a great-ass time. Made a lot of connections. I need to hit up the Pro Hofa show to learn about how he does his fire marshal thing, as well as, like, other aspects I want to go ahead and pick their brain on. And, yeah, as far as what I've been up to, that's pretty much it. Went to L.A. for the opera, um, went with my lady to uh, my um, anchor partner. We went to Mexico for her birthday. Um, did some like local travelings around, and the traveling didn't stop because next weekend I go to a Polyfest in Galveston, and um, they asked me one of the people that's showing there asked me to actually do a um, a demonstration with Impact. So me and my floggers and paddles and all my good stuff will be rolling with me to um, Galveston. Where we're going to go ahead and give some impact to some people and hopefully they'll like it. And by hopefully, most likely they will because I'm getting good at what I do. And then after that, literally three days after that, Go into Hedonism 2 with uh, my anchor partner where we're going to go into some debaucherous fun. <laughs> so that's going to be uh, another, like, I'm, I'm just here to have a good time because I know I'm not here for a long time. Um, so beyond that, I'm just really trying to, like, focus on, like, keeping up with this podcast. I also have two podcast ideas in the works. One is going to be um, titled Big Letter Podcast um, that is revolved around like the big letters in regards to like BDSM and different power dynamics. As myself, I call myself a hedonistic dom because I am a hedonist. I derive pleasure by providing pleasure and I am a dom in regards to how I prefer to take control, use control, things of that effect. Um, so that'll be coming. That's currently in the works. Again, I've been busy. Hopefully that'll be out soon. 
Um, but that's pretty much to catch up with me. So, well, let's go ahead and get into this episode. Again, episode 9, Cheater Cheater Pum Pum Eater. And for part 1, I want to go ahead and discuss, like, what is cheating? Because cheating is such a fluid term, because it can mean anything to anybody. Like, you got some people out here that characterize, um, just simply, characterize, like, simply talking to another person as cheating. Some people just, like, if you go out with your boys without letting it be known, could be considered cheating. It's like, there are many aspects to, there are many ranges to how people can see cheating. So, it's not real clean, cut, and dry. And, even, like, my friends... Yes, they're all black. I realize I only have black friends, which is like a good thing. But I'm like, yo, I might need to add some white friends to the roster because, you know, I, I might need to get away with some illegal shit. But um, when it comes to like monogamous people, when they see someone that's open or non-monogamous or polyamorous or polygamist, what they see is, wait, so... You have your girlfriend, and then you have other girlfriends, so that means, like, it's like you're cheating the game. It's like, what's going on here? I feel like, um, yeah, like, that shouldn't be fair. Like, how, how are you able to do this kind of thing? Like, one of the first things when I, like, brought this up to my boys, like, they were, like, astounded. Not that I was non-monogamous, but the fact that I found a partner that was non-monogamous and was, like, about that kind of life. And it's like... It blew their mind that there are women out there like that. I think black women out there like that. I think that's what was, like, blowing their mind with the whole thing. And, like, one homie in particular was more focused on, wait, so your girl can go out and sleep with other dudes? I'm like, yeah, that's that's kind of how it works. Because I'm not a one-penis policy kind of guy. And he was, like, so stuck on that. He was like, wait, so, like, she could fuck other people. I'm like, that's what it kind of means to go sleep with other people. And so when the monogamous people hear about people that are non-monogamous, it's just a concept that on one hand, it's like they never realized that was an option because you grow up, growing up in America, you know of kids, red door, picket fence, white picket fence, like you just know that you find someone, you marry them, you have kids, you grow old together. That's pretty much what's taught. Even some religions, like um, Christian religion, that's the main focus. So bringing up non-monogamy it just seems like you're cheating the established system but i don't see cheating as that so my personal definition of cheating is that you and your partner have established boundaries into what you consider your relationship dynamic now what monogamous people don't realize is that's exactly what they're doing they're establishing boundaries now a flaw on their end is that is presumed boundaries versus established boundaries. When you go into a non-monogamous relationship, that's kind of the uh, main the main thing that goes on in the beginning is that discussion of what your boundaries are. Because one person's boundaries may not align with yours, and because poly- non-monogamy is so broad, you can't just assume that one person's non-monogamous style is the same as yours. So more times than not, boundaries are established. And once those boundaries are established, once you knowingly cross said boundaries, I consider that as cheating. Example is, hey, do not have sex with my friends. It's a common one because you kind of want to separate your um, platonic relationship with your sex relationship. So a lot of people have that boundary of do not like have sex with my friends. Even my anchor partner, that was like one of her first things, mainly because of um, some past happenings. But she was like, yeah, friends are off limit. So that means right now I could sleep with there are seven billion people in the world. That means there are six billion nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred and eighty people of course she break down women men gay lesbian you know the number shrinks but still there's like five to ten people that i cannot touch so that means if i go out of my way to have sex with said people that's me breaking her boundary that's me cheating like i could have slept with whoever else that's not cheating because we established that boundary and same thing, like, I gave her my boundary, so if she ever knowingly crosses that, that's cheating. And the reason why I say knowingly, and I feel like knowingly is important, is because if someone does something and they don't know it was bad, 
how can you consider that cheating? Because they don't even know. Now, there are some things that you can say or you can assume. Like, yes, there are some, like, baseline assumptions. Like, hey, I can sleep with anybody. I'm not going to sleep with your mom. That is a dick move. And, yes, that's, like, an assumed boundary where it's like, all right, that makes sense. But, say, for instance, someone kissed someone. No one established that kissing is off limits. So I can't, you can't be upset at someone that kissed someone else and not know that that was a boundary of yours. Because now that they know it's a boundary of yours, they can go ahead and make that decision of whether they want to continue pursuing this relationship or um, break and move on. Because if that boundary does not align with them, that gives them the pretty much the option to go elsewhere, seek what they're actually looking for. Because a relationship is not supposed to be torturous. The reason why you get in a relationship is either for survival or survival or enjoyment. That's the main thing. You get together in order to have a better chance in this world. Or you get together because you pretty much elevate each other. You, you get joy from one another. Like, why be in a relationship that doesn't involve survival, that doesn't involve joy? That makes no sense. And yeah, so you got to make sure that the boundaries are known. And if those boundaries are known and they step past it, yeah, that motherfucker cheated. That's pretty much how I personally see cheating. Now, again, I said it's nuanced. Now, what might be cheating to one may not be cheating to another. And they, I do believe there are certain levels to it. Yes, a sin's a sin, but there's a difference from stealing an apple and robbing a bank. That's pretty much how I just see it. And... Uh, but yeah, that's actually, my part one is just, those are my main focus. Now, when, I feel like one important thing is, you have to make sure the boundaries are reasonable. These boundaries can't be um, created out of jealousy or you want to restrict another person. The boundaries should be about protecting yourself. That's the main goal of boundaries, because at, if you go beyond protecting yourself and trying to use boundaries to control another, that is not healthy, and that will lead to a very toxic relationship with a lot of grief and regret. So yeah, so whenever you do end up um, be creating a relationship, creating a new partnership, um, adding someone else on, you have to understand what your boundaries are and what they are for, because if they are based in trauma, you might want to go ahead and deal with that trauma, be it with therapy or figuring out like what it is that makes you yourself tick. Because if you don't know how to control yourself in a relationship, it's not the other person's job to control you. Their job is to help either enhance, either guide, but not to essentially be your parent. Unless you're in that kinky dynamic. But that's 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 for another podcast. But um but yeah, so it's literally you have to dig in and figure out what your boundaries are for yourself. So that way when said person crosses it, you actually like recognize where it's coming from or why it needs to be done. So you can either cut things off or you might need to go ahead and just like move forward and move on to another partnership or re-establish the boundary because maybe you discovered like, okay, I see where I went wrong. You're free to change your mind. You're free to update things. We are humans. We grow. We change. That's just how it works. So just got to make sure that you do put in the work in yourself, discovering what those boundaries are, and you also got to put in the work in maintaining those boundaries because there are a lot of people that meet a lot of boundary pushes and they keep letting them slide until they essentially push them to a breaking point. So you have to be firm in your boundaries because there's a reason why there are some people out there that get cheated on repeatedly. Now, this is not me trying to victim blame. It's not me putting like fault on the decisions they, they make. This is just essentially from what I observed, you'll have like a relationship where the gentleman pays for everything. The old school parental grandparent relationship. Mama, um, the grandmother, she couldn't get a job. She couldn't even get a bank account because, you know patriarchy and so she needed a man in her life just to like be able to get a car get a house you know the basic necessities of living she couldn't do it by herself so she had to stay with grandpa who might have been a rolling stone with three different families and the reason why that she allowed that persistent cheating is because she couldn't survive without him a la why i feel like everyone is stupid saying yo grandparents used to stick together no no they were forced to stick together big difference there's choose and there's force 
Um, but yeah, that's why you'll see that repeated happen because it's not like someone wants to get cheated on. It's not like they don't want to step away. It just really comes down to everyone's circumstance is different. So people kind of like stick with the cheater for one reason or another. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and take a quick break. But when we come back, I'm going to go ahead and um, focus on uh, my own personal endeavors in regards to being the cheater or cheated on. And also just like the overall like, so cheating has happened. What's next? All right. I'll be back with part two in a moment. All right, travelers, welcome back to part two of this episode, Cheater, Cheater, Pum Pum Eater. So, um, y'all saw where I went off, where I started off and like talking about what is cheating, at least what is cheating to me, as well as monogamous um, people looking at polyamorous and um, non-monogamous people thinking that their their whole lifestyle is cheating, where, yeah, <laughs> let them be miserable. I don't know. I shrug. Um, but no, for part two, what I did want to actually look into is my own personal story in regards to cheating, um, as well as like, like what happens after the cheat, like what's, what's the next part? Um, so yeah, so my own personal story, I believe I told it before and, uh, was that episode four or five where I kind of broke down my own personal journey. Cause I realized how am I telling y'all about this journey I'm on? If I'm not going to tell you where I started, and uh, one of those involved a partner back in my UT Austin days where, um, so even before her, there was a lady that I was in love with and I could tell she did vibe with me too. I don't know if it was the vibing or the sex. I was younger then, you know, you, you do dumb stuff when you think dumb stuff when you're young, like, you know, good sex might be love. Love might be good sex. I struggled at that. Um, but yeah, there's someone I was feeling, but it was like, it seemed like they were interested but not interested i just really couldn't understand it and so um i was like i'm just gonna leave this alone i don't know if we're gonna be a thing and then there was someone else i met down the line and like we got together like we instantly hit it off and like not even long like boyfriend girlfriend just you know going and do things having good times like it was just you know the relationship was great and solid but um, then the person that I was, like, feeling um, was, like, moving out of the city and needed some help. Like, you know, she had a bit rough go of things with, like, a boyfriend and things happened down the line. And she was, like, going back, um, moving back home. And she needed help moving because she couldn't get anyone else there out to help. And look, 6'3", I think I was, like, 250 dead, still hitting the gym. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? I didn't have any thoughts about, like, because I was focused, I had my lady already at that time. Like, that was my girlfriend. So I was even, I was thinking this completely innocent. Like, I go, you know, one man moving crew, help load her truck, help pack her things. And, like, I was like, all right, cool, we got everything. All right, I'm going to head out. And then she was, you know, she she was a bit sweet on me, where she was like, I don't really do appreciate it. Like, she, like, grabbed my hands, like, yo, you're the only person to actually reply, blah, blah, blah. And was, like, you know, tugging at heartstrings and... Then she went in to kiss me, and I'm not going to be foolish and say, you know, she kissed me like we kissed because I, I then partook in that kissing that led to a bit of a makeout. But then I was like, I'm in a relationship. Fuck. And I was like, I appreciate you. I'm glad I was able to help you out. I'm just going to, you know, make my way and head out. To which I like closed, like I walked out calmly, you know, closed the door. And then my ass sprinted to my car because I knew if I stayed there one second, we were fucking. Like, that was going to happen. Like, I just, I would have had a baby mama. Like, that's what would have happened if I stayed in that space. But in my head, I cheated. Like, kissing another person while in my monogamous relationship at that time, like, that's cheating. And I've never cheated before. Like, I was, what, this was, like, I was 22, 23 or something like that, and, like, never cheated before, because I'm like, what's the point? Like, if you're my girlfriend, you're my girlfriend, and that's, we just go from there, and that's just how I rolled, but that was, like, my first um, infidelist moment, and I didn't know what to do, 
And like a week later, like I just like I told my girlfriend at the time, like, I'm gonna have to break this off because like I didn't tell her the why. I didn't say, like, because I kissed another woman. Because I just felt too guilty. I couldn't even tell her why we're breaking up. I'm like, I'm just going to let you go. It was like, you know, because she going to be blindsided because we, like, we were having a great time. Like, we, everything was solid. But that happened. And, uh, yeah, I did not handle it in a mature way where I actually let her know what happened. Like, it was like I kind of caught myself out with that. Like, you know, like... Honestly, I might still be, I might be, I'm, I'm developing the story because maybe she would have been like, oh, it's okay. It wasn't that bad. Maybe, we, you know, I could have took so many different avenues to at least let her know the why as opposed to make it think like, you know, something worse. Um, But yeah, that was my story of cheating. And my way of dealing after it was breaking up the relationship, which I don't, I don't have regrets because of where I am now in life. But I still feel bad. And that's why I also want to ask, like, what happens after cheating? Because, again, a boundary was broken. Um, feelings were hurt. And it's like, what do you do next? For me, I do see it's either you heal or you break up. Some people try to, like, do the in-between where they, like, don't even try to heal. They're just holding their hearts forever and they eventually break up because of it. Um, or, you know, you can go to therapy, try to figure things out because I truly believe only a small margin of cheating is done just cause I can't like, yes, there'll be some people that will go sleep with whoever while in a committed relationship just because they have the ability to, but I feel like that's more the minority. Most, I see that most people cheat, even with the, like my friend group, when they cheated, it was because it was kind of like a cry out for something else, be it physical or emotional. So, because like the sex itself is just sex. Normally, the cheating is something deeper, be it they don't find you attractive, or they don't have a connection with you, or they got bored with you. So it's like there's other there's reasons behind the cheating itself that normally is just not discussed because it's like kept within and kept festering. They don't communicate what might be going on. And that that's, again, if it's only one ex in a non-monogamous relationship, no, sorry, if it's only like just one ex in a monogamous relationship, it's multiplied by multiple factors whenever you're like dealing with your other partners. So it's something you got to be mindful of. I would say what happens after cheating? I would say before that, make sure you are communicating regularly. If you have some displeasures or concerns, make sure you bring that up so that way they can be addressed and not grow into something as infidelity. Um, The after, either, first off, think about the relationship as a whole. That's what I would say. If it wasn't that long or if you feel like your boundary was that, like, that boundary was broken and crossed, like, to the point of no return, like, a set hard boundary, then I will say just look to break up. Because if they didn't care about your boundary, like, um, at, before the cheating, then I don't see it getting corrected without any work being put in. So I would say just walk away. Either go to your other partner to explain what happened or find you a new one because... Again, relationships should not be relationships should not be unnecessarily hard. They're going to be hard because two humans coming, well, as many humans coming as one, on one accord. So of course, relationships are hard, but they shouldn't be unnecessarily hard. Which is why I'm an advocate of yo break up and move on. That's the best option for you. Now the other part is the heal. Like if that cheating came from something, say. Um, being ignored, being getting ignored, or not having enough sex, or anything that effect. Like, make sure you try to like find the root if you do want to heal from it. If the root is coming from something that can't be changed, you got to move on. But if it's something that maybe you didn't notice or something that could be worked on, then yes, go ahead and heal. Like you're with this person for a reason. Now, if you feel like any form of cheating is a wrong for you, then go ahead and end it. Because look, we are not anyone's property you don't own that person they don't own you again unless it's that kind of bdsm dynamic hey they they be happening um but yeah as long you're no one's property and you can just break up with someone because it's a tuesday 
Like that is an option. So you don't have to quantify why you might want to end things. Just know that if that boundary is a hard boundary for you, go ahead and end it and move on. Um, but yeah, that's just going to go ahead and be my episode nine. Cheater, cheater, pum, pum, eater. I just love seeing that title. <laughs> but yeah, um, be sure to go ahead and tune in in the future. I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent now that I'm settling down in things. Um, I do know I'm traveling the next two weeks. So I'm going to make sure that I either pre-record, though I do have a guest coming on for the next recording. Um, just went to a friend's party. So, um, I talked about my non-monogamy. She heard, I was like, wait, you just said non-monogamy, you said non-monogamy right? It's like, yeah. It's like, oh, snap, I'm poly with, like, um, I'm in the quad. I'm like, oh, shit, I just saw a random black person that's non-monogamous. Like, that was actually cool. Someone have her on. We're just going to just pretty much talk and vibe, kind of like I did with Love Goddess in the last episode. Um, so be sure to tune into that. If you want to find me, I am Hitchhiker's Guide to ENM on Instagram, Hitchhiking to ENM on uh, Twitter, and that is with the. Uh, oh, sorry, not hitchhiking, hiking to ENM uh, with the K. Um, and also, if you want to do see my more um, BDSM side of um, things, that would be um, the Hedonistic Dom on Instagram. And yeah, I'm going to try to get these episodes out. I do appreciate you for listening. And um, yeah, be blessed. And make sure you look both, both sides before you cross the street. <laughs>